Jet, are you gonna be my girl on XFM 104.9? I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant, over there, little roundy bald head of Carl Pilkington. Good news and bad news, good news is, boys are back in town, we're here for two hours. Hello. Bad news is, we have no monkey news, um, gay fella news, or little Chinese fella news. Really? We're gonna try and, you know, leave that for a week, yeah. and then maybe come back to it. Yeah. Was, was Why good. do I get the feeling that within 20 minutes we'll be talking about little, uh, little gay <laughs> Chinese, Chinese monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, think of that. We have got monkey news. Have really? we? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> we've already broken that promise. Oh, okay. I thought we were gonna try and sort of talk about something else. I've just done Jonathan Ross show and they, they don't talk about the same things every week. It's weird. Mm. It is weird. Mm. But, um, or as Carl says, weird in it. Yeah. So, um, gave this show about five plugs. Nice one. Yeah. So, uh, I think we'll get upward of 800 people listening. <laughs> oh, double. F for the first two minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then turning back. They're already switching over. I, I'd have thought so, yeah. I spoke to my friend yesterday, I, he's a little bit of an odd fella, and he said that he, for his own amusement, he had an iPod in his car, and he bought a little sort of transmitter, and he could transmit the music from his iPod to sort of just beam it. Kind of as he was driving along to sort of passing cars. What do you mean? I, Make weird. their radio play it. Well, but if they had it in the right frequency, yeah. Um, I mean, pointless, completely pointless, but not dissimilar to this show, I imagine, in terms of the number of listeners. <laughs> yeah, but I was going to say, what's the chances of people having th this frequency? Absolutely on? pointless. So it's probably about the same, yeah. Do you know what it reminds me of? When I was uh, when I was young, I wanted to get into radio. I was excited in radio. When I was sort of in my, I don't know, it was eleven or twelve. My friend and I, we, uh, we got a little mixing deck, and we used to host our own radio show. Brilliant. Uh, from his bedroom. We didn't have a transmitter, so we'd put some speakers in his front garden, in some bushes, and sort of broadcast it to people who were, who were walking Again, by. Again, probably over the week more listeners than this show. Almost certainly. That, yeah, I love the idea, we n it never happened, but I always was hoping that some, so maybe some girls would just come by and just like sit and listen, these guys are great. I don't know where the sounds are coming from, it seems to be that bush, but... Or Noel Edmonds <laughs> yeah. coming along going, who are these guys? <laughs> yeah. Can you get on my vocal Can they stand in for me when I go on holiday? Yeah. Yeah. I did, uh, did I say I did sort of pirate radio? No, go on. Did, uh, got into a- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the normal radio but you had an eye patch on. Go on. Uh, Dad was in hospital, right? And, uh, he was having some operation done, right? And, uh, went to see him and didn't have that much to say to him, right? So I was, sat, I was I was sat there. Well, it's awkward though, isn't it, when someone's ill? Yeah. Sure. And you don't. Know Boring, what to say, isn't it? <laughs> Boring. So I was flicking around on that little radio thing they have. Yeah. And I heard like they had a radio station in the hospital, so I said, "Oh, I'm gonna go and join this." So I wandered off to go and find it. Yeah. Uh, sort of joined that. Did a little show on there. Thought I can I can sort of get out to the masses here. Mm. My mate made a little transmitter. Did a little pirate radio show from the, uh, got, got kicked out because they found out and apparently I put the, the station at risk because all the stuff could have been taken off us. But uh, from Little Icon, 16 years later, he's on a show with less <laughs> listeners. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Uh, Can you imagine if you're, you've gone into <laughs> hospital, you're already pretty depressed, there's the fear of these bugs, super bugs in the hospital. Yeah. Maybe you've got some quite serious illness, you know, yeah. you don't know if you're gonna make it. His voice is what you're here to cheer you up. Alright, weird, isn't it? I saw a programme about a parasite the other night. <laughs> yeah. Apparently they, they get in through your eye and eat their way out through your <laughs> genitals. Yeah. Anyway, you here's think you've radio got it bad. Ed. Yeah, exactly. Play a record, Carl. Bit of stone roses, isn't Oh, fool's gold. Classic. Classic. Stone roses, fool's gold, XFM, 104.9. Brilliant. Can I help but notice you've uh, brought some sandwiches in, Rick? Mm. What, what's in there? Cheese and onion. Cheese and onion? Yeah. Because I've never, never, ever seen you make sandwiches before. I've seen you take a loaf, a piece of bread out of a loaf yeah. and sort of fold it in half, crumbs everywhere. Well, Jane made that for me because I was in a bit of a hurry. I, do, I, I, I didn't think for a minute that you why, made it. Why? Because it yourself. looks neat. Well, it's they're wrapped in the tin foil. <laughs> they, a knife has been used. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to chewing round yeah, the baguette. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, breaking yeah. it in half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Anna yeah. Albert Steptoe. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Nice? It's great, but the yeah. onions are strong. Are they? Making my eyes water. Yeah. If I come and breathe on you, yeah. it'll cure any sort of skin disease you <laughs> might have. Skin disease. We watched that, um, Carl, you know, that Carl was raving about that thing about parasites, about worms coming out your brain and that. And I watched What is it. this? Is this a TV show? Yeah, called Body Snatchers. Right. And it was pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, amazingly shot as well. I mean, it's got to win an award for photography. Yeah. And there was, uh, one bit that, um, this little girl had been bitten by a mosquito and laid her eggs and went to the doctor, she had a lump on her neck, like a boil, 
and uh, they pulled it out, and it was like, like a bullet, this maggot. Oh. And it, they put it down, and it was wriggling in her blood, right? But the hole left was sort of aesthetically pleasing. You know, like that feeling you get, like, I once had an ingrowing hair, and I quite liked it when I pulled it out. And it's a perfect little hole. And I thought, I wouldn't mind having those as long as they sort of, like, healed over. What are you talking about? I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? Well, why would you want a hole in your body? No, it's got pulling something out, sort of, like, pulling something out of your body. It's sort I don't of cleansing, know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but it's sort of like... <laughs> this is it. You watch one program <laughs> recommended to you by Carl, you've turned into Carl. <laughs> You want a hole in your body? <laughs> no, it was, it was like, you know, like squeezing a really good sort of like spot. I mean, I haven't squeezed spots for ages. In fact, I'd never had spots, but maybe that's it. I didn't have spots. Right. And I always thought that would be nice squeezing a spot. I don't know what you're talking about. Why I don't would these know. things be I pleasurable? Why about. would a hair, an ingrowing hair, that's yeah, great it was good. fun. That was good. Because I, I got it, it was like a little lump, and I pulled it, and then it pulled out, and it was like that left a little. I hole. know what you mean. Did I, I, yeah. I, get, I get thick hairs yeah. down there. Yeah. Like, really... Oh, when they come out, it's like a bit of wax. Yeah. Like a, like pulling out a little candle. And I love that. What? Uh, yeah. When, because I've got no, not much hair on my head. No. Right? <laughs> it sort of grows thicker on my face. No, not true. Um, <laughs> sure, but go on. Yeah. No, it does. Not true, baby. Go on. <laughs> no <laughs> evidence for that. Just made it up. <laughs> so it yeah. grows sort of thicker on no. my neck and that, and now and again I'll see, like, something that's like a twig. Right, it's, it's yeah. really thick. Yeah, you feel it, and then you think, oh, I'm gonna have that, and then you work at it, and then when you get hold of it, it's brilliant, it's like pulling out a, it's fantastic, it's waxy and build-up, and it pulls it out and it stretches your skin and it leaves a hole. I've just realised why we talk about Chinese people, monkeys and gays every week. <laughs> why? Because this is the sort of replacement. <laughs> this is what we've got, if we're not talking about <laughs> them. But it was great as well, and um, there was a, there's this parasite, right, that lives in the fish, right, mm. and what it does, um, it changes the fish's behaviour. Because to breed, it has to get its body temperature up, so it has to get into a bird. Right? What, sorry, what needs to get into the bird? The, the fish? parasite. To, to the complete parasite its needs life to get into a bird. Yeah. Right. So it changes the behaviour of the, um, the, the stickleback, and it makes the stickleback sort of suicidal. So the stickleback doesn't flee when it sees a heron, it gets caught. Right. Because this stickleback has changed its behaviour. I was, tr uh, Carl didn't quite understand this, I did you? I still don't really get it. I watched it, and you see like the fat fish and that, and you go, oh, it's not well. But I don't understand. Well, all it does is, it has to get into a bird because it has to, to breed, uh, to lay its eggs, it has to have a, a raise of body temperature. So it has to, the fish is cold blooded, so it has to get into a bird which is warm blooded. There's lots of things, uh, uh, certain things at yeah, that why, level. Why? Why is it doing that? Because it needs a, it needs the, the, uh, the temperature. It needs the, the, the heat energy for the, for its reaction. Just like, for example, that's why your balls are on the outside. Because the cells have to be a certain temperature to survive. I think I don't know if it's the sperm or the cells, but they have to be a couple of degrees below body temperature. Otherwise, they'd be in a nice cage, and we wouldn't get kicked in the nads. What do you mean? That's why your testicles are on the outside of your body. They have to be a couple of degrees below body temperature. Yeah, but it's not. That isn't why they're there. You see, this is like the chat we had last week about the giraffe having a long neck. What do you mean? They're there because that's where they happen to be. They didn't go right. Well, that's what evolution is. It's it's a selection process. It's not a will. The balls didn't say, look, I'm too hot, let's get us outside, let's get outside of here! Alright, hang on a minute then. What? So a little, a little man monkey, <coughs> right, theirs are in the same place as ours. Yeah. But, but, oh, they're, they're walking around naked, so it could be anywhere, they could be like on the back. It doesn't no, matter where it, they are. They call it, well they could be on the back, yeah. So why aren't they? This is a completely different, <laughs> Steve! Uh, you started it! I'm washing my hands of the whole affair. And we're, we're not only back to balls, but we're back to monkey balls. <laughs> yes. In one, in one thing from about parasites, we're back to monkey ball news. Yeah. And we're back to, to, to chimp testicle news. <laughs> Alright, all right then, so this thing, this worms in a fish. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's like a little platy helmet. I think it's some sort of, sort of... But what I mean is, why are they about? What do you mean? Why? They evolved. But why haven't they died out? Because they're very successful. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? What do you mean, yeah? Uh, what, well, tell me the, tell me the brain event that made you say yeah in that one second gap. Because uh, in a way I don't get it, and uh, if I think about it too much it hurts a bit. They've just been around for years, Carl. Yeah. Like Cliff Richard or something like that. Yeah. yeah Forget about tomorrow by feeder.
mm. on XFM 104.9. Carl is in some pain now, isn't he? What angers me is the fact that the listeners, at least they get a record. They get three minutes where they can just relax. They don't have to listen to this drivel. I've got to sit here for another three minutes while you try and explain to this idiot <laughs> why we they have a parasite and why we have fish and why, you know. <laughs> get, it's get just what? interminable. Oh, Carl's question is, what's the point of a parasite? I was saying, well, they evolved alongside everything else and it's part of the ecosystem. He's going, but why is a parasite in a fish in a heron back in a fish? And I said, what's the point in anything, right, apart from the balance of the ecosystem that survives at any time? And then Steve went, Carl, you should have done this when you're in sixth form. Yeah. Questioning the point of life. Yeah, you should have had these existential questions, you know, when you were younger. Did you, you ever used to lay awake at night thinking, where did the universe end? No. I did that when I was about six or seven for about a year. When, I, when, I, when someone said it was- <laughs> He was lying awake at night thinking, where does Manchester end? <laughs> <laughs> I assume it goes on forever. <laughs> oh, they've, they've made a map, haven't they, for the uh, yeah for the universe? Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, to, as far as they can. Yeah. Big is it? It's massive. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're that lost, <laughs> you know what I mean. Forget <laughs> the, the map's map. not going to help you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you're that lost, forget it. Look, yeah. we're never going to make it. We're not going to live 400 <laughs> light years. We're not going to. Of course, you could um, take a shortcut through a wormhole, couldn't you? What's that? Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> let's not talk about the universe, please. <laughs> let's talk about something that you can comprehend, Carl. Well, listen. Were you on Richard and Julie yesterday? Right. Yeah. Tell us about that. It was good, it was good fun. Yeah. It's a bit surreal. Is it? Yeah. It's, th it's nice, that's nice though. I really, I, there's something charming about them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They, mm. they go off on tangents, they, they sort of digress, they suddenly think of something she suddenly go, oh, my jumper's itching or something, you know? Yeah. And it's quite, it's quite charming, it's not annoying at all. Yeah. And, um, I'd never seen it through before, and, uh, um, I hope I didn't insult them because I said it was like an adult Blue Peter. Right. But, but um. In what it, way? Well, they had a, they had a, um, a Christmas wrapping con uh, competition. Right. Then they had, they had uh, a Christmas wrapping yeah, competition. Yeah. And then they had, um, That wasn't them doing kind of Then they had what the French people are like. There was a little, didn't quite understand that, living in France. Then they had a, a woman who, um, relived an Elizabethan Christmas. <laughs> the bit that made me laugh was, she was, um, sort of announcing this through an Elizabethan microphone and PA <laughs> to all the people sitting around addressed to Steve. I'm a bit confused. Like, this sounds funny. And, uh, it was good though. And, uh, and, uh, at the end I said, um, the next week I'll be washing a tortoise and that. Yeah. And the producer said, if you do want to um, <laughs> make something for the show, we'll definitely feature it. <laughs> so I might, I might make some of those things that you spoke on Blue Peter, like sending, sort of, you know, I remember, um, they made a chest of drawers out of three match, match boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For Barbie doll or something, or yeah. Action Man. I seem to remember them showing you how to make a dusty bin once. What, on, on, uh, yeah. Blue Peter? I made one, I remember making one. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen, I haven't watched Blue Peter obviously for like 25 years, yeah. but is it the same sort of thing? I think it's pretty much the same now, yeah. They sort of, occasionally they'll have kind of, um, larger sort of dramatic scenes so that all the, all the cast will kind of act out sort of murder mysteries and stuff like that. Oh yeah. There's a bit more of that going on. Do they still have the Kodo band. drummers from Japan over? <laughs> I think the Kodos come on like twice a week. With this, the shiniest buttocks I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Greased, they're in like sort of nappies or whatever they call yeah. them, and they're playing the drums, and you see them from behind playing these big drums, and they've got shiny buttocks. The lights really pick up their, their arses. I think they've, they've, cause they've kind of funked it up since we were younger because I remember it was always stuff like let's have a look at this traction engine yeah or let's drive some traction engines one very small yeah a slightly larger one then you need a exactly. larger one and we'll just drive them around the studio no because you're going up Nelson's column with Shep yeah you might die you might not but I always wondered if perhaps the people in charge were not perhaps down with the kids when they were saying <laughs> what we need this week let's have a look around a traction engine a exactly that's I, what I, the kids of the early 80s was, want but it was they did used to sneak in education whereas Magpie that was just like funky people who were sort of really in the 70s never watched Magpie no never I know I, I got it wrong as well I did yeah. used to watch it but I I used to watch Blue Peter, I think I was conned. I always feared, because I, uh, see, with the Blue Peter, I felt like I was learning something. I imagine on Magpie it was just, you know, Mr. T came round and, or whatever. It was a lot more yeah, cool, was it? Yeah, it was, it was and... a little bit more cool, yeah, and a lot more throwaway and, um, it was sort of like, Magpie was sort of like looking. Right, on yeah. telly. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. What happened to looking? I don't know, it's the Junior TV Times, I don't know. There's probably people listening who've never even heard of Lurkin. Is that what it was? Apparently so. But there was cartoons and things. Mm, yeah, it was just basically an advert for ITV, <laughs> looking. Oh, was it? Almost entirely, yeah. And did it have, did it have like a Laurel and Hardy strip or something? No, it would have things like the story of Five Star. Really? And, uh... Is it like, like, is it like the ones in the, the News of the World? Not dissimilar. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I've had five kids. <laughs> Next picture. <laughs> Bought one of them a guitar. Yeah. Next one. We're at number seven. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Next week, Tina Turner. I love the fact that Five Star is still touring. There's only three of them now. 
Really? They're still called Five Star. Really? Mm. Yeah, I th there was four Boney M's at one point. <laughs> Tribute acts that each one of them had a, and then there was a fifth who was someone who was wasn't the original member of one of the Boney M's <laughs> who set up a splinter group. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know how many there are now. Yeah. I was thinking um, what we should do on this show as well is have a doctor. Right, just sitting in the you're corner. Worried about your health? No, no, just so when's coming so when when Carl says why are your bollocks there, the doctor can now go. Well, let's ask doctor. <laughs> right, and he goes they're there because I know. And we need a is vet Dr. as well. <laughs> we need we need a doctor, probably a vet. Some sort of vet or a naturalist would be good. And what else? Oh, and a physicist or something or an astronomer. Mm hmm What do you think, Carl? I'd love that. Would you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are there, is there any doctors listening? Of course there are. As if a doctor would <laughs> listen to this. <laughs> if there, if you are a doctor, I want a qualified doctor. I don't mean someone who's in their second year at medical school. We're not interested in that. Right, a qualified doctor, a GP or a, a, any specialist, and you maybe want to contribute regularly, give us a call. Yeah. We'll even give you a special phone line and stuff. Yeah, yeah. For not for now, though. For, we're going to get a lot of mentalists, aren't I we? would adopt a nom de plume, an alternative, e you know, identity, because your patients are going to flee if they find out you listen to this Exactly. Tribe. What's the phone number, Carl? Well, they might as well just email in with the number, might That's because you don't like answering the phone. No, I just think it's a better way of doing it. Okay. Uh, how can they prove they are a doctor? Just, uh Go on, Carl. Uh Something to do with, uh <coughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on. Something to do with, uh, What thing could they say that we'd say, well, he's definitely a doctor, or we wouldn't know that? Think of something. Well, I'm not a doctor, so... We're on the radio, Carl! Let me ask you a question, you've got to speak! I know, I'm just thinking, I don't know how you'd know, because you don't- you never ask them, do you? If you need their help, you don't think of going, no, before you do this, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> they're saying that, they're saying that, right? Go on! Um, <laughs> Go on! Talking about this the other day. Yeah. Um, oh, what was it now? <laughs> this, listen, the fella, Play no, listen. Do you want, this, all right. All right, no, oh, hold on, all right, he's got it now. Go on, go on. This fella goes yeah. to the doctors, yeah. right? Oh, right, okay. Right, if this isn't any way apocryphal, stupid, illogical, impossible, right, you are never, ever speaking again on radio. So make sure this is at least possible. I, I'll tell you what, I'll even give you improbable but possible. So if anything that breaks the laws of the universe or logic, okay, that's all you have to avoid. On you go. Right. So this fella, right, he goes to the doctors because he's got earache. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. If a chimp's living in his brain, <laughs> that he come gives, on, go on. So he's got earache. He's sat in the waiting room and it's all his ears all bunged up and it's hurting a lot and what have you. So the doctor comes out and he goes, <laughs> right, and because his ears all bunged up, he doesn't hear it that well, right? So he thinks it must have been me. Right? So he wanders in. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Anyway. I'm, you, I'm gonna hate this. I can just feel it in my bones. Steve, I'm gonna let you take over. Okay, let's so, go on, let's hear it. Come so okay. the doctor says, uh, sit yourself down there. Right? So he sits himself down. He goes, uh, right, uh, take your, pa take your pants off. Right? <laughs> so he's thinking that's a bit odd. Anyway, he, uh. He heard that though. He, <laughs> he, he, uh, apparently he took his, his tackle off. The doctor, like, did some operation. What, there in the waiting room? <laughs> no, in his office. In his office, yeah. What? Um, wait, wait, so, so he, so he removed what? His genitals? Yeah. In, in his office? Why, 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 Carl? Why, Carl? Because he hadn't called him in. Oh, he's calling the bloke who wanted his testicles <laughs> taken off, and he didn't do it. You, you, <laughs> what? So, so the doctor went out and said, Mr, uh, Jones, who's here to <laughs> me to whip off your cock and balls, just here and now, right? Bloke comes in, didn't it? It must have been me. So the bloke with the- we wanted his balls taken off didn't say, oh, I think he said me. So he- so he didn't interrupt then. So the bloke goes in, he starts oh, taking his man. testicles off and he doesn't say, I'm here for me. It's a new single from uh, Snow Patrol and Run. That's brilliant, isn't it? It's good stuff. On XFM 104.9. Rick. Go on. I'm about to say three little words to you yeah. that I've never said to anyone before. Go on. Carl is right. On um, what, though? From Reuters, someone's emailed in, uh, a Brazilian man who went to a clinic to have an aching ear checked ended up having a vasectomy after mistakenly believing that the doctor had called his name. 
Um, he had gone in there, entered the vasectomy room when he was called. He was called by the full name and yet thought it was him. But the strangest thing is that he asked no questions when the doctor started preparations in the area which had so little to do with his ear. He later explained that he thought it was an ear inflammation that had got down to his testicles. And, um, the fellas came off. Extraordinary. All right. I'm stunned. Amazing, isn't it? But there's lots of things that keep coming true with Carl's nonsense. There's a, there's a program on next week. The boy who gave birth to his twin. Oh. And he's there. He's like, he's like pregnant with his thing, you know. How long ago did we do that? <laughs> yeah, you discussed that years ago. When I talked about it, it was a baby who had a baby. Now it's a boy who's yeah. like a grown man and that. It's took them ages to sort that out. Mm. I did it in one link one Saturday. <laughs> yeah. With the full story. <laughs> right? Keeps happening. We've done like Donald McIntyre's thing, right? He's been ripping us off. Mm -hmm. I did Cheap as Chimps. Yeah. He's, he's been doing it. No, he hasn't. He has. He's done some programme about how much it costs to get a monkey and that. <laughs> right. Uh, what else have we done? <laughs> he believes things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's loads of stuff we've done like that. Um... You had the word, the maggot coming out of the head? I laughed at you, yeah. Didn't, didn't, in the programme, didn't see him wrapping the head in bacon, but, <laughs> I mean, the, the principal's there. Bob Holness has ripped off Rock Buster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he ripped you off years ago. Yeah. He's been ripping you off for years, <laughs> which is even more annoying. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Interesting. Uh, yesterday, you know, Rich and Judy gave you the, uh, Tea picked by monkeys. Yeah. I told you about that either last week or the week before. Yeah, and then you also told me that there's a place where they grow coffee where the weasels come out and eat the coffee, <laughs> right? But they have too much of it, get you to and vomit, and they sell the vomit because it makes the coffee smoother. Weasel vomit. Yeah. Absolute shy. It's not. It's not. Right. When you say it like that, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where is well, uh, the way you'd say it? Yeah. No. They, they, why do they keep? Why do they keep taking the coffee? Probably you, addicted to it. You get addicted it. to it, don't you? Caffeine and that. Yeah. Why do they stick it up then? Because they have too much. They're tired. They can't sleep. They, they sort <laughs> They're of. Tired. They can't sleep. <laughs> so they get ill. It eventually yeah. wears them down. They're sick, and then they they sell it. I showed it's... those looking. This, people send monkey news all the time for Carl, yeah. and I showed him one earlier. Which said, there's a new monkey hospital that's been opened. Yeah. Carl, now, that's for the, for the, for the but, treatment of monkeys, right? But he immediately thought it was run by monkeys yes. in white coat. Did he really? Yes, and he was disappointed because it wasn't. He was assuming there'd be little janitors, is that what you said? Yeah, little janitors <laughs> mopping up. Um, Carl! Little chimps with the ECG machines or whatever they're called. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> he was ang almost angry. Yeah. Disappointed with it. And what's this about Donna Air giving her baby to a gorilla for a week? It happened. No, it didn't happen. She had a baby. <laughs> they went on the honeymoon. They left it to a little gorilla to look after. <laughs> don't talk! Absolutely, it's, don't talk! Oh God! Okay, there's people online now, so they can have a look at Anna Nova. Do you want to give her? Uh, do you want to give some stuff away? Do some. Uh... <laughs> he believes it, and that's it. But the more these things sort of like pop up, come true, the wor more worrying it is. <laughs> the more worrying it is for everyone. I, I imagine if Donna Air had left her baby to a gorilla. It's absolute. It's libelous. You saying that? It's libelous. It's not. Well, you'll, someone will send it in in a bit, and then you'll you'll feel daft again. So I'm not even worrying about it. Okay. Right. right. You've got some rubbish to give away. Do you say? Uh, yeah, we've got some stuff to give away. Uh, DVDs, stuff like that. Well, let's play uh, record. Let's do the. Any VHSs? Any films on VHS? Yeah, a couple of them in there. For four ninety nine. Yeah. Supergrass. Yeah, excellent. Um, what is the competition, incidentally? Uh, doing songs of phrase. No. Oh. Oh. Supergrass, late in the day on XFM 104.9. There's too much to get through here, Rick. Go on. There's too many things we've got to systematically Am I going to eat my list. words? Well, before that, you know, we get emails all the time. They're coming through all the way through the show. And I, I open know. them, and a lot of them, because you know, everyone's contributing, it's brilliant, but we can't really absorb everything. There's too much coming yeah. through. So I tend to open them quickly. I have a look, see if there's anything we can sort of make sense of and close them again. Sometimes Carl looks at the emails as I'm opening them. One opened just a minute ago. Did you saw his face. I suppose, yeah, what was it? His face was just stunned. He was it's just absolutely dumbfounded. It was yeah, like he'd what just is seen it? something extraordinary, right? And you closed it quickly. I, I did close it quickly. I'll tell you why, what? right? Always got to bear in mind how Carl's mind works. Uh, all he saw was the name of the band that 
this email was uh, promoting. So yeah. all he saw, all Carl saw, and you can imagine how excited he was, was all he saw was half man, half biscuit. <laughs> that's, that's all he saw. <laughs> I have never seen anyone so excited. Oh, God. It oh. was actually just plugging the popular joke novelty <laughs> band. Half man, you half biscuit. Them, then? Yeah. Uh, I imagine how excited he was. That is fantastic. <laughs> Man, half biscuit! Brilliant. Mr. Garibaldi. <laughs> oh, half man, half biscuit. That is genius. Oh, uh, amazing. I just saw it, and when you closed it again. Yeah, but the thing is, if, if he hadn't have told you that, and he'd have it, uh, erased it, next week you'd be saying, hey, about what they've done, the scientists, they've cloned a man with a biscuit. <laughs> He's got currants for eyes. Never go swimming. <laughs> what? Never okay. go swimming. Anyway, just to, uh... Oh, I don't, I don't know what the world's coming to, but, um, someone sent us a link to, uh, one of the web news pages. Go on. The headline, Donna Eyre to hand her baby over to a gorilla. Well, it's not. It's not gonna be what he thinks. Listen. Donna Eyre and her zoo owner boyfriend, Damien Aspinall, intend to place their baby daughter in the care of a gorilla. Uh, the couple plan to put Freya, who was born in September, in the gorilla enclosure at the zoo near Canterbury. They will then let her be carried off by the female of the group. Neither parent has any qualms about letting their daughter be taken off, despite five keepers being killed by animals at Howlett's and his sister's park since 1980. I don't understand. What do you mean? Well, th that's it. That's the new It's thing. a newborn baby, and they're going to put it in a gorilla... But, I mean... Well, he said, why would I not trust them? I know them. I grew up with them. They're my friends. Yeah, but it... But I, I'm not saying that they're they're aggressive, but it might roll over on it or something. I don't, well, I don't know. Take it up with the uh, with them. I mean, Donna Air's not the brightest spark in the box. No, um, but I, I it don't would seem think her husband is. I don't think you know that <laughs> that would in, she'd endanger. I mean, they must know some that we don't. I still do, I, I still can't believe they're just going to leave the gorilla with it. Mm. Me, why no would I'll. you though? But but why would you? Even though it says well, it's cheaper than a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I don't know. Well, how cheap is a gorilla babysitter? Carl <laughs> knows because there's probably some sort of organisation. <laughs> right? Are we uh, competition? Then come on. Then what is it? Oh, songs of phrase. Um, Remind us of this. Um, we got the film one coming up later as well. Oh. But songs of phrase is the one where. I, I took a popular phrase from the show. Well, no, it's not a popular phrase from the show. It's uh, sometimes something you said once. Oh, There's yeah. this airy Chinese kid. Yeah. And and I get all different bits of songs, so, yeah. you know, I make up that sentence, and you have to email in with the artists that you hear. Well, what's right. the popular phrase, then? What's this What's this w popular phrase that's sweeping the nation? Uh, it's what we talked about last week. Go it's, on. uh, my girlfriend had a problem with a marrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Okay. She uh, wasn't your girlfriend. Oh, yeah, but I couldn't find sort of <laughs> no, okay. blind date or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. so seven seven artists it's taken to make up this. Me song girlfriend surprise. had a problem with her marrow. Well, that's at least eight. So, well, maybe I not. I think I've managed it in seven. Anyway, okay. here we go. Oh, what the artists? Well, let's yeah. the names the of the artists. artists. Yeah, Get what, a pen and paper, make a note. What artists are you hearing here? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Very oh, good. Oh, okay. Right, what's so, more? So, uh, what, what the artist? Very My girlfriend good. had a problem with her marrow. We want the names yeah. of the artists. What can we win, Carl? Just, just, just can I just um, recap that story? Um, girl can't on a blind date. Um, but when he found out that this girl had some sort of bone marrow problem, he said he didn't want to see her anymore. What's the point in getting to know someone that's going to die? <laughs> yeah. So just that's what you're dealing with. That is what you're dealing with with Carl Pilkington. Would you buy a car with a Duff engine? <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a fair point. Ricky Dutchervase <laughs> at xfm.co.uk. <laughs> Don't steal our son. The Thrills on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Over there, Carl Pilkington.
the man who believes anything. <laughs> I you... think it might be a condition due to his little round head. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, it might be a new condition that uh, we can call cranial sferity. <laughs> and it, cause it's, it presses on his lobes and the only sort of upshot of that is, he's normal in every way but he believes everything he reads <laughs> or yeah. sees on Ananova. Mm. Mm. Alright? Talking of which, Rick, I don't really follow the news. No. It's mainly boring, innit? Wars and stuff. Yeah. But I don't know Well, yeah. Well, it is a war. It's just, it's all this nonsense before and after. When it's a war, it's, you know, it's in the middle of the war, you can watch it on telly. True. You get results, true, true, you know what true. I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a test match or something. But it's all this rubbish before and after. It's drags this, on. This recent war seemed, I thought, just generally, it was better presented than the previous one. Because I remember the, well, golf, the first Gulf War, it was, it was often during the night. And Disappointing. And I wasn't, couldn't stay up. Yeah, enough. because I think the American had rights to it, like the Tyson fight, so we, yeah. had, to, we had to get it at two in the morning. Exactly. Which is annoying. They had, it, you know, their prime time in that. Yeah. And yeah, a lot yeah. of it was in black and white, it was when, it, when the bombs went in. Black and white when the bombs went in. So, uh, this no. This time, they seemed a lot more colourful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much better coverage. I think there's been awards. Yeah, well, I like for it. So, uh, like Channel 4 one for cricket. Yeah, I mean, a few times as well, I was quite pleased to see you know, they actually had footage of the bombs exploding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, good. Well done. Generally, you know, good on you. Yeah. Well done. Um, good on you. Yeah, it costs you, a lot though, doesn't it? It isn't a cost. Wars thing. a lot more when you got something like you know uh, a Jimmy Carr game show, which probably costs about underground. Yeah, like half an hour of war costs yeah. millions. It's almost man. as expensive as like Terminator Three or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know. But, but then you know you got you got a variety. Exactly. Sorry, Steve, you're talking, mate. <laughs> well, no, I just uh, just wanted I just wanted to make sure you were aware that the um, the World Elephant Polo Championships have taken place. I did get it. You're I think that that. On, yeah, yeah, we won, didn't we? England won. Yeah. Well, I, my question is, where have they been practising? I don't know. I, I, do you remember it, ever at school anyone ever saying to you, are you interested in playing, uh, polo do with was, elephants? Was, do you reckon it was five blokes in pith helmets kept sneaking into a whip's nade? <laughs> Possibly. What are you doing, lads? We're practising. Get, get down. Yeah. Get off them elephants. Yeah. I genuinely, I don't, I didn't even know we had a team. I elephant, can't believe it. No, but I, it's like Johnny Wilkinson and the rugby lads, they're gonna get MBEs, all sorts. The elephant boys, the elephant polo boys, nothing. They get nothing. I haven't seen the but, sun. You know, to be, like to be fair, it's not like horse polo where I think I don't think you there's a stick long enough. I think the elephants kick it, don't they? I think you might be right. I think they're not allowed to use their tusks. They burst it, won't they? Mm, I think they go, yeah. Oh, <laughs> start again. Raheem. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean the elephants kick it? All right, I've, got, I've opened a can of worms here. Uh, you know, um, um, normal polo on a horse, they have like, um, yes, mallets. Yeah, they whack them, right? But I think it's, obviously they're too high up. I think, I, I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they just train the elephant to kick it. So, so like, why are people something about, why not just let them have a kick about without... <laughs> And why does horse racing have to have a jockey? Well, they just let the horses go, oh, you know, okay, lads, on your, no cheating, <laughs> on your marks, get set, go, you know, get back here, get back here. Brilliant. Why do you think, just, I'll tell you what, now, I, I'm gonna be like a teacher now, why do you think? Uh, just sort of get mixed up which hand they sort of go in, which hand they've got to get the ball in. Sort of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How do you, how do you sort of steer an elephant, as it were? How do you ride an elephant? It seems quite a complicated procedure. I don't imagine they're quite as versatile as a horse. No, you can't sort of like pull it and its head goes, no. can you? No. I mean, I don't really know how you, I mean, you'd have to have a huge playing surface, wouldn't you? I mean, these are big creatures. Yeah. They, they, they use Kent. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. They, and they drop two big, uh, huge jumpers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. Say. One, one in, uh, yeah, south of Kent, <laughs> one in North Kent. Exactly. And it takes days and, and is there, days. is there the full, is there like eleven on each team? Yeah, and one on the subs bench. <laughs> exactly. And it, it keeps breaking, the bench is broken. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> he's living because he's never getting chosen. He's never, he's never getting chosen, yeah. yeah. When he doesn't turn up to training. Of course, and he's, he's never gonna forget. He's down the lake. Exactly. Down at the lake, when they should be training, eating too many <laughs> buns. <laughs> exactly. Like gas coin. <laughs> right, Carl, come on then. Oh, hang on, I just must tell you as well about Lord Admiral Nelson's erotic letters. Go on. They've been sold at last. <laughs> for £117,000. Sunday mail? To get them. I don't know who bought them. <laughs> <laughs> who opened them that yeah. shouldn't have? They, they got sent to someone else. To you. They were meant for Lady Hamilton. <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> opening them? <laughs> Go well, on, uh, what's he say? What's he got up to? <laughs> she, uh, it's interesting because they've printed a couple of the things he's wrote. Dear Lady Hamilton, uh, a bit of a problem. Uh, just the one hand. You might have to help me out on a couple of <laughs> yeah. manoeuvres. Yeah, and the one eye, so I'm not appreciating the 3D. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
exactly. I don't care where you put it. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't, yeah, go on. <laughs> You'll have to help me guide it in. You might as well go across the other side of the room for all the good it do me. Exactly. Go on then. Um, uh, of course he ended up kissing Hardy, didn't he? <laughs> Did he kiss Hardy or did he ask him and he never did? Well, I don't know. I don't know about this because I heard that he didn't and it said kiss me, which means fact. And then I heard that he did say kiss me, kiss, kiss me, me Hardy, Hardy, like you know, because it, it was such suspense. I don't know. Is it kiss me or is it kiss me? Kiss me, Hardy. I think his final actual dying breath was no tongues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. And, uh, uh, and someone went, "Cause you what?" <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe my, that was his my, nickname. My name's Smith. Yeah. Go away with a kiss. <laughs> exactly. Kiss me hardy. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so. I'll kiss your lips and you'd be happy with it. <laughs> but, uh, I'll yeah. touch you hardy. <laughs> but I'm not kissing it. Go on. A couple of quotes from there. Uh, this is him writing to, uh, Lady Hamilton, who he was having a, an affair with. I can neither eat or sleep for thinking of you, my dearest love. I never touch even pudding. I think we've all written a letter like that to a lady. That's a euphemism. <laughs> that's like, I, that, I think that's, I haven't eaten, and by the way, I haven't even knocked one out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you are gonna get a sack for. <laughs> alright, Carl? Who's the producer? Is this alright? It's all euphemisms, I've not said anything wrong. Go on. Oh, come on, it, it happened in the 19th century. Yeah. We can talk about it, you know. Yeah. This is more topical than monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, listen, we, sorry, we better get back to the competition. I'm worried that we've, uh, we've lost sight of that competition, because I'm not gonna lie to you, we've had no entries whatsoever so far. I can't believe that, because I actually got up most of those. That's actually a more accessible one. I knew, I, I think I know all the artists and I'm stuck on, um, uh, Girlfriend, but I think I might know who that is. Let's hear it again. I'm Bye. surprised. Bye. Now I think that's a pretty accessible one, An eh? accessible quiz? Yeah, so no one's- is the email up or no one's listening? No, well I think there's a little bit of that. But, um, we- I think we've accidentally closed down the texting. Oh. So if- if you're texting in- This <laughs> is rubbish. It really is awful, isn't it? Yeah. Just- just play it again, hang on a minute. Bye. <laughs> I'll tell you what it was, we didn't give out the prizes. We didn't say what the prizes oh. were going to be. That's the reason. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the emails are going to go home mental, yeah. when, they, when they find out it's the first series of Open All Hours on VHS, they'll okay, be uh, yeah. flooding in. Let's see what and the got Bridget here. Nielsen video. Exactly. Right. Oh, dear. Oh, God. No, actually, it's not too bad. Go on. The best air guitar albums in the, uh, Yeah, in the that's world. still going. That's, <laughs> Volumes that's one evergreen. <laughs> That'll keep running and running. Uh, Some kind of anniversary box set of a Doctor Who episode with a small one model car. What's that, baby? I'm Alan Partridge series two. That's yeah. worth having, obviously. And yeah. Porridge series three. Okay, good. If not uh, watched all of them on UK Gold. Then <laughs> <them> on <DVD. laughs> there's something wrong with you. <laughs> all right. So yeah, let's hear it again. All right. Bye. Bye. Name the artist, that's all we want. Yeah. The artist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Play record. Ryan Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. His version of Wonder Wolf. If you've not Beautiful. heard it yet, you'll be loving it. You'll be loving this. Radiohead. Fake plastic trees on XFM 104.9. Mm -hmm. Someone just emailed in and said, uh, just want to know what you think of that cover of Wonderwall. Mm. We told you. We said it was great. Yeah. Listen. But they must have been listening to hear the song. Yeah. Extraordinary. Although maybe they just turn off when we start talking. Yeah. That would make sense. That would make sense. Mm. I mean, it makes sense in a sort of, sort of preserving of sanity type way as Objectively, well. Objectively, Rick, if you were listening at home, if you didn't know us and you were listening to the show, would you listen to it? Would you bother? Um. I know that's a hard thing to get your head round. Uh, it's difficult to say, isn't it? I, I've no idea. I've no idea what people coming to this for the first time think. Mm. I, I mean, mean I, you know, I love you like a brother, but I get sick of you. Yeah. I mean, I, I get sick of me. Yeah. Sometimes I, I go up and It's weird you should say that, because someone's emailed in. Yeah. A recent survey's been done by Cheltenham and Gloucester. Mm. The most desirable neighbour in Britain. Number one. Shane Ritchie. Johnny Wilkinson. All right. It doesn't actually give me the, the full rundown, but uh, David Beckham was in the list. Yeah. Shane Ritchie was indeed in the list. Yeah, uh, he's flying at the moment. As was Ricky Gervais. Really? Well, that's what it says. It doesn't tell me where you came, though. 
And y- that- there was actually a neighbour from hell and you weren't in that list. Well, I'm a good neighbour. Oh, come on. I am. I'm quiet. I don't keep myself to myself. I never- Do you know what I'm thinking of? What? If it was- if it was best friend. Yeah. Now that would be a nightmare. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Most I'm desirable a, friend. I'm a good neighbour. I'm quiet, you know, mm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I imagine being stuck in a room with me writing all the time, with me squeaking <sighs> like a chimp. Unbelievable. Although I- I don't physically abuse you. I save that to my bald mates, like Carl and Robin, that I just like to squeeze their head. I don't yeah. squeeze your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's because you command a little bit more respect. Ah, thanks very much. Do you know what I mean? You're mm. not- you're not that sort of- you're not an idiot. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure. Alright, Carl, got anything to say? Has anyone seen his picture in Heat this week? It looks fantastic, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Do, do you know what Steve said when he saw that, Carl? Go on. He said, it has captured Carl. Mm. What do you mean? Well, you just look utterly gormless. <laughs> In the pictures, it's captured <laughs> brilliant. You know, how, like a good photographer can do that and capture the essence of someone. <laughs> That's good stuff. It's good stuff. Well, actually, I'm the photographer. Yes, it was a screen grab from the behind-the-scenes footage. Well done. So I got that that gimpness. I captured the essential gimposity. <laughs> exactly. The uh, yeah, Carl. Yeah. All right. Captured it. Yeah. Well, I'm th- um, I did a little article for Time Out, and I've, I think Boyd from Heat has sent over. That screen grab to them, so he might be in time out. I'm going to try and get him in every publication. Yeah. For one year, it's like. Well, Dave- you've managed it in the last two weeks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like a Dave Gorman project. Mm. Uh, mm. Do you, are you Carl Pilkington? <laughs> yes. Th- let's do that, shall we? If anyone's if anyone's got a publication, it doesn't matter how little. Mm. Just take it from Heat. They, 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 that's mine. So you're uh, welcome to it. Um, just try and just put his picture in anything next to round things is best, mm-hmm. isn't it? That'd be good. You alright, Carl, with that? All right, then good. What have you got for us, Carl? Uh, News headlines? There are not that, sort of been that much going on. Sure. Sort of headline-wise, you no. know. Sure, I look for, sure, no, sure. No, because I look for good headlines and that, don't I? That sort of yeah. get you interested, like the- Well, then, then when you're interested, you don't read on. No, I did. Okay, go on. Like the one, do you know I read, the one I read out a couple of weeks ago, that was, uh, man lives in dump for ten years. Mm. I, I remember the Chinese woman eats dirt. Yeah, yeah well, that man, was a man, man lives in dump for ten years. I read on with that one yesterday. Yeah. I found it in my bag because I took it on, so that I'll read that when I get a minute. Yeah. Right? News. Imagine that. News. <laughs> I might read last Thursday's Sun. <laughs> yeah. Just to catch up. Uh, do you know how he got caught? What do you mean how he got caught? What he, he, lived, he lived in, he a, dump. in a rubbish dump. Well, he what's li- up he with lived that? in a rubbish dump. What's no good? one, n- no one knew he was there. Right? Yeah. He was living off food that had been chucked away. He said a lot of people chuck away stuff that isn't off. So you can survive on that. Uh, he had a nice little place to sleep and that, an, an old mattress that was all right and stuff. Yeah. Uh, got away with it for ten years until he decided to celebrate bonfire night with some fireworks. Can <laughs> 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 you believe that? <laughs> well, he, you know, he's happy that the uh, gunpowder plot was foiled <laughs> exactly. and the Guy Fawkes was beheaded, anyway. thus saving our system of government. There's gotta be a couple of news headlines, surely. Um Hold on, wait a minute. Bong! Pierce penis man off the hook. <laughs> Bong! Man changed his name to bubba 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 bubba. <laughs> <laughs> Bong! Dwarf to live in a glass box. <laughs> Dwarf to live in a glass box? Yeah, it's meant to be art or something. <laughs> it's not though, is it? Yeah. What? I mean, do we art? Why is- yeah, well, who's- who's idea is this? Is- is- is art or is, is someone hired a dwarf to live in their box? It's just a box, and he can even leave when he wants, apparently. He can, yeah. like, go, oh, I'm hungry, I'm going for a walk, and he puts a little note. Uh, with his dame, yes, he might end up in four bits. Oh. So, just be careful. But to me, that's like that thing when I said to you about the woman in the jar. What woman in the jar? The woman in a jar, they go, oh, come and see the woman in a jar. And yeah, then it's a it big turns jar. out it's a big jar, so yeah, it's, it's like, well, jar. put me yeah. in there as well, then. Exactly. It's not yeah. special. Yeah. And that's- that's the same with- with him. It's a big box, he's a small fella. What's- what's good about what that? What do you want to do, though, to compress matter? But hang on, it's not a world record-breaking attempt, it's supposed to be art. You know, what's art about that? Well, I don't- <laughs> What's art about that?! Oh, can we do a show for BBC Three? Carl Pilkerton going around, what's art about that? Yeah. That is brilliant, what's art about that? I'd love that. Would you? I'd love that. Me and Steve are going to do a thing called Is Art Rubbish, where we'd go around and we'd chat about it. Yeah. But um, we, well, we can hand that over to you if you want to do that. If anyone from BBC Three is listening, Carl Pilkington, what's art about that? Alright? Weird, isn't it? And what would you go around like Sensation and things like that and Sarchi and going- Darley and that. You put a sheep in for Maldorad, what's art about that? 
Oh, yeah. Butcher does it. Uh, all right, uh, weird, isn't it? Uh, what do you make of Dali and the, the melting clocks, all that stuff? Talked about it, haven't we? Have I we? told you, yeah, told you. What do you think about it? Wasn't it? Uh, he sort of milked the idea a bit. <laughs> right. Because yeah, sure. every, everything had a melting clock on it. It yeah. was like he had a bit of success with it once and then he just ruined it. Do you know what I mean? It's sure. like... It's like you with the monkeys. Like status quo. Yeah, or... Yeah. Sure. Like, What's your favourite artist? Don't say Lowry. Lowry is my favourite Why is Lowry your favourite artist? Captures life, doesn't he? Going on and In that. stick form. I know you're a big fan of Where's Wally as well, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've never found him, have you? I've never found him yet. <laughs> no, Carl, that's not Wally, that's a stain on the table. You've come <laughs> off the book again. Anyway. <laughs> Listen, are we, uh, are we doing what's in a bit? What? What? <laughs> what? What? Right, what? what? We don't know what you're talking about. Play a record. What? Yeah, we'll be doing what's it in Yeah, what's it? Coming up after the break. Uh, the film thing. The film thing. Oh. Idiot. Liberties, don't look back into the sun on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl, have we got the results? Yeah. Go on then, what are they? Uh, play songs of phrase. Play okay, this, songs of phrase. This was the phrase, these the songs. With her My girlfriend had a problem with a marrow. The answer's Sinatra, Prince, Billy, uh, Bill Medley. Uh, U2, Shirelles, there was also Dub Pistols in there. Uh, no, well, no, no one got all of them, Carl, obviously. Um, but we'll give it to Mark Cantan, he got, uh, what did he get, about six or something. Yeah. Well done, he's from Dublin, Good. so that's nice. Okay. Listening over there, the Irish. Yeah. That's good, it? Right? Um, yeah. a German man, just thought I'd let you know this, Carl, sure. Ricky. A German man has, um, been arrested because he taught his dog to give the Nazi salute. <laughs> and then he made it do it in front of two policemen. I think it's an offence in Germany now. That's is a it? fascist with too much time on their hands. No, but is it, a, it's, it's illegal for a dog to do it as well? I think so. I bet he thought he'd found a loophole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, he's been dying to do it, but he thought, well, I'm, I'm not allowed to do it. It's illegal for a human to do it. Yeah. Thought he got round it. Uh, no. For a while, it just kept doing the, uh, Basil Fawlty funny walk. <laughs> <laughs> he's going, no! Yeah, no, you're don't do that. It. Don't do the legs as well. Uh, oh. But so the, the reason I mention it is because he's German. And you, what were you telling me about earlier about? <laughs> Carl was wittering on about the Germans earlier. He was saying something about the accent. Um, it's yeah. fine with blokes, but not with women. You wouldn't want to go out with a German woman because the accent. I just think it's a bit manly, isn't it? Sure. Is it? Yeah, it sounds a bit hard. <laughs> I can't imagine having a nice sort of romantic chat <laughs> with someone. Well, it's not a romantic language, no. It's, it's it's quite harsh. Yeah, but that's our. No, but what I mean is, right? I can't speak any other languages apart from this one. Well, right, you're struggling on. with this one. Yeah. And what I mean is. Whereas you you really do speak the language of love. All right. It, There's some condoms. Where's my tea? Yeah. What I'm saying is, if a French woman was talking to me, I'd say, I don't know what you're talking about, love, but it sounds good. <laughs> whereas, <laughs> whereas a German, German woman, yeah. I'd go, oof. And she might be saying really nice stuff. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. But then we got talking because, do you know, like, me brother- Sort of a prejudice, really, isn't it? In a sense. What do you mean? So, in a sense it's racist, but anyway, on you go. Yeah, go on. Uh, it's not really, is it? No. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, my brother was in the army, we've talked about it, haven't we, and yeah. how he got kicked out for going for a packet of flags in a tank and that, yeah. right? <sighs> But he was, uh, when he was in the army, he was based in Germany for a bit. And, uh, he used to be one for sort of, you know, picking up the ladies and that. He, he always had, you know, new girlfriends and stuff. Yeah. He's a Pilkington. Get, used to get through loads of them. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't. I, I wasn't that bad. But well, no, brother, but you, you, you had things like, you had trouble with your marrow and that. No, you might die. I'm not interested. Yeah, but no matter what he did, do you know what I mean? When he was a bus driver, he was one of them who always had a woman still at the front with him and sort of, you know, having a chat and stuff. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, uh, right. he sort of got kicked out of the hat and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... When he was this, when he was bus driver, did, did he own the bus or did he just take it to get a packet of fags? <laughs> so, he, uh... He's in Germany. He's in Germany and the army people say to him, now, we know what you like, Pilkington, right? Das Pilka. Don't be, uh, don't be meeting up with any German frau women. lines. Leave the frau lines alone. Not allowed to go out with German women because they, apparently they get you and then they beat you up and that. What, the German women? Yeah. Why? Go on. Don't know, they just said don't, because they don't like, uh, English army man. English army people and that. Why? See, the, the, the English is your first language, isn't it? Are you speaking German now? Or? I, d I, I can't tell. Yeah, don't get out with the Germans, go beat you up and that, don't like English army man. 
What, See, what, is what, that? what worries me, Rick, is we've got the face, the body language and things to try and interpret this gobbledygook. The yeah. listeners, they just I got mean, the words. it must be, I yeah, know, yeah. It must be just ridiculous for a listener. Right, just do the competition. What I'm was trying. that anecdote about? Don't go out with German women, they'll beat you up. I'm just saying when if you're in the army, if you're about to join the army and you think it'll be great, I'm gonna meet loads of women over in Germany, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Wise <laughs> words there. Wise <laughs> words. So this station in public service. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Right. Uh oh, can we just play a song and then do the film thing? No, right? just do the film thing now. Oh no, let's play a song. Oh what are we playing? A bit of brag. Billy Bragg. Yeah. Excellent. What's this called? It's called the Saturday Boy Car. Billy Bragg, the Sunday boy on XFM 104.9. Um, Ricky's laughing because he's just <laughs> thrown something at Carl. It made him jump. Yeah, that's worked well. Here are the prizes <laughs> for the, uh, the film quiz thing, which I think is what it's called. It's brilliant. brilliant. People will be loving this. It's, uh, is Trance it? Alp Anthems. It's brilliant. 2003. We know we've got a lot of trance fans listening. The best air guitar album, obviously. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, the best club anthems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Series one of Happiness by Paul Whitehouse. Uh, the very best of Father Ted on DVD. We've got Teachers. We've got Knowing Me, Knowing You. Not too bad. Yeah, a few bundles there. Good stuff. Christmas gifts and things like that. So uh, that yeah. Knowing Me, Knowing You, I've noticed it's on VHS, which is good. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite quaint. Excellent. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Yeah. yeah. So what's the con explain the conceit of this? It's uh, it's when you know we sort of dig out a film that I've been in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this is... I don't know if I want to tell you what a film is, because that might be the question, thinking about it. Because there isn't that much going on in the clip. I think we need to know what the film is. Do you? Yeah. Alright, it's Rain Man. <laughs> okay. Uh... Why is he called Rain Man? Is that gonna be the question? Yeah, I know the, I know the answer, Carl, don't worry. Don't look at me like no, that. I do, I do, I do. Oh, well then, yeah, you should watch the film, yeah, you should. Right, so it's you, Carl, in the film Rain Man. Yeah, it's the bit when, uh, Tom Cruise... Uh, is in the doctors with, uh, with, with the, f with the ill man. Alright. <laughs> there we go. You ready? Well, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I do know that his brain doesn't work like other people. Wait, I, I am sat here. Don't go talking about me like I'm some sort of diff kid. Got a good brain. Works well. It stores all sorts of information and stuff, doesn't it, Tom? He, uh, remembers things, little things, sometimes. Well, d d don't say it like that, little things, as if it's stuff that isn't important. Are you good with numbers? The doctor's asking you a question. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking. Good with numbers. It depends. Uh, I'm not that good at maths, but I remember facts that have got numbers in them. Like, I know that, uh, one person in two billion will live to be 116 or over. Right. Weird thing is a lot of them are Chinese, so, you know, sort of makes you wonder if they're lying. I'm afraid I don't understand what you're talking about. What do you mean you don't understand? It's not... All right, here's an easier one for you then. Goldfish have better memories than people think. He's right. He's right? Yeah. See? There you go. Uh, goldfish related. Oldest goldfish in the world was 41. No. Yeah. Um, funny thing is there, if it was a goldfish with a dodgy memory, it could have been older. could have been, you know, pushing 45. That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. He should work for NASA or something like that. Well, I not go that far. You know, they're the sort of things that I like reading about, you know. I've got that big book there. Uh, it's full of stories. Did you read all this? Yeah, just don't... You it, read all these stories yeah. that are in this book. Don't bother touching Maybe it. you better put it back. Give it back. You know. Okay, no, Ray, 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 take it easy. I'm not gonna... I won't touch anything else, Ray. Come on. It's okay, Ray. It's okay, come on. Can I ask you something else, Raymond? No. Well, you've annoyed me now. You've... Can't come in here saying, saying I'm daft and that and... Messing with my book. Just go, will you? Excuse me. Were they messing with your big book of freaky facts? Yeah. Yeah. That's out of order. Good. Right. So what's the question? Why why is he called Rain Man? Yeah? Yeah? Everyone happy with that question? Yeah? Yeah. 
Okay, uh, Ricky Dr. Vase at xfm.co.uk. Why is he called Rain Man? What? Mm. Yep. Bad day, REM, XFM, 104.9. That's nearly it, isn't it? That's almost it. Got through another one. Got through another one, seamlessly. <laughs> the film quiz, obviously, we had just moments ago. Uh, it was Carl featured in Rain Man. The question was, why is he and the film called Rain Man? The answer, Ricky, was? Well, uh, Tom Cruise's character, when he was little, couldn't say Raymond, and he used to call him Rain Man. Okay. Plenty of right answers, but we're going to give it to John Steele. Who interestingly is from West Yorkshire. He's listening. Yeah, that is, so inter that, that is interesting. <laughs> it is. It yeah. Is. Um, so that's pretty much that. Is there time for monkey news? I think we've got to have monkey news. Let's and then that, that second track from the Ryan Adams. Let's play the jingle though, if we can. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news, you. F right now, uh, it was back in the 1980s. Right. So it is quite topical then. Mm. Um, yeah, okay. When did this happen then? 1980s. Yeah. Yeah. It's about a uh, Colombian F1 sort of, form, you know, Formula One driver. Yeah. Uh, apparently these races were going on, right, and, uh, someone kept winning them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, okay, forget it, forget it. No, don't do it. It's cause it's rubbish. Cause it's rubbish. Right, so someone kept winning the races. So, uh, uh, this, this, um, this someone, this, this human, um, that kept winning the races. Th so this human being that kept winning the races, um, Carl, what was his name? Um, his name is it? It's Jimmy something. Yeah. But how tall is he? Well, Just something interesting. No, 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 no,